Hey ladies, welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a 30 minute workout approximately and we're just going to be focusing on lower body today. So we're going to hit our glutes, quads, inner thighs and a little bit of calves. Um, so what we're doing today is just two sets and what I do want to tell you if you want to make this workout a little bit longer and challenge yourselves a little bit more, you can always pause after the second set, do a third set and then start again. So you can make this three sets, make it a little bit longer um, for the purposes of trying to keep this uh, within a 30 minute video, we're going to do two sets. Um, so let's get started, we're just going to squat to warm up. And I want everybody to know when I do these classes, I want to explain proper form, I want you guys to know the angle of your back matters, um, it'll make a difference on what muscle groups you're working where your feet position is, and where your weight is in your heels. Um, so I do like to talk a lot because I want you guys to learn as you do these videos with me. Um, there'll be another video upcoming for upper body, um, some core work, maybe some cardio core, maybe some body weight exercises in case you don't have any equipment. Um, we're gonna go to a lunge. This isn't like your typical filtered, um, <laughs> and, um, you know, video, I'm filming this at 10 o'clock at night. So you guys have this, I have a lot of clients in between our, um, sessions that want to continue working out. So I want to provide something to you guys that you can do from home and strength training is really great. So these kind of videos where you're learning the movements, learning the proper posture is really going to help you start out. It's suitable for all fitness levels. And what really makes it from a beginner to an advanced level is not so much the movements, but it's the amount of weight you use. So if you want it to be more challenging, you gotta pick up heavier dumbbells. You can do reverse lunges with just body weight if you're starting out, or if you don't have any dumbbells, you can always do most of these, if not all of these, with just body weight. So it's preferable to have some dumbbells, even if they're light dumbbells. Um, but again, if you don't, you can completely do this workout with just body weight as well. Okay. Let's get started. Um, we're gonna start off with reverse lunge to a curtsy lunge. I like to explain how to do the exercise before each one. It gives us a little bit of time to breathe before our next exercise. I'm not a fan of skipping from exercise to exercise right away without letting our heart rate come down a bit. So reverse lunge to curtsy lunge, you are working your hamstrings and glutes. And when you work your hamstrings and glutes, you want an angle to your back here. You don't want it to be all the way upright. So you are angling your back, your weights in your heels, you do a reverse lunge, which comes straight back, down, up. You cross over like a curtsy behind your foot and curtsy, okay? So from this angle, and you're holding weights here if you have dumbbells. You come down, reverse lunge, back, curtsy lunge, okay? So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna hold 20s. And we're doing one leg at a time, so we're not alternating. Ready? And reverse, curtsy. That's one, reverse, curtsy. Reverse, curtsy, that's three. Reverse, curtsy, four. Reverse, Curtsy, five, reverse, curtsy, six, reverse, curtsy, seven, reverse, curtsy, eight, reverse, curtsy, nine, <laughs> reverse, curtsy, 10. Again, not filtered, not edited. 
You'll do the workout exactly how I'm doing it. Um, we're gonna switch sides. What I want you guys to know, again, is make sure that your weight is in the back of your foot, in your heel. It'll really make a difference on activating the right muscles in your glutes. I wanna show you from another angle. So we're gonna go reverse, vert C, one, reverse, curtsy, two, reverse, curtsy, three, reverse, curtsy, four, reverse, curtsy, five, reverse, curtsy, six, reverse, curtsy, seven, reverse, curtsy, eight. It should really be getting challenging here. And if it's not, then I want you to pick up some heavier dumbbells. So those last two or three reps of any and every set should be challenging to finish. And if it is not, I want you to go with heavier dumbbells. And if you don't have heavier dumbbells, I want you to add on a few more reps. So we're gonna let our heart rate come down just a little bit. We're gonna go to set two. Also, you can start out with dumbbells and if it gets to the point where you just can't do any more, you can always drop the dumbbells midway through and finish up with body weight. Just try to get through the whole count instead of giving up and stopping in the middle. Okay. Set two. I'm gonna start back on that first leg and reverse, curtsy, reverse, curtsy. Good. I am, for those of you who don't know, a mom of three kids. I have put everyone to bed. It is 10 o'clock at night. So if I miss count, <laughs> and my clients and friends in my sessions know that I will miss count sometimes, but I'll never take away. Let me just add an extra rep. Good. Like here, I feel like I'm adding another rep, but that's okay. This is the last one. And one more side. So the beauty of strength training is you're building muscle, which is gonna really help with fat loss. And as you can tell, if you're doing this with me, you're out of breath. You're also burning a lot of calories, and I know that's the goal for a lot of people. So you can have a high calorie burn and strength train, build lean muscle, lose a lot of fat, which is gonna be doing a whole lot more for you than just doing cardio alone. Okay, last set, and reverse, curtsy, Reverse, curtsy, two, reverse, curtsy, three, reverse, curtsy, four, reverse, curtsy, five, reverse, curtsy, six, your muscles should start Feeling pretty fatigued here. Seven, reverse, curtsy, eight, reverse, curtsy, nine, reverse, curtsy, ten. All right. Grab water. 
water anytime you need it. I want you to try not to hit pause because we want our heart rates to stay up, just not at a dangerous level. I will give you guys time to catch your breath between exercises, like right now, and explain the next exercise. So next one, we're gonna work our quads with goblet squats. Now, if you have an extra set of dumbbells, I want you to grab those also. If you don't, and you have something sturdy, about a couple inches thick, that you can raise your heels up on, I want you to grab that, and this is gonna be a progression. So if you don't have anything to raise your heels up with, it's perfectly fine. You can do goblet squats with your heels on the floor as well. So I'm gonna hold a 30. You wanna uh, grasp the head here. And I want you to see the difference between that angle I had in the first exercise, which was here. But we're working quads now, so I want your back completely straight and you're coming down as low as you can. So there is a completely different posture to my back. So keep it as straight and your chest as upright as you can. If you have something to elevate your heels, I want you to just put your heels up on those extra dumbbells or anything else you have. This is gonna help you actually go down much lower into your squat. We're gonna get started in one, two, and it is okay for your knees to track over your toes when you're doing quad exercises. Five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like to show you guys from a different angle. You will have a slight natural lean when you come down but you do want to keep it much more upright than you would if we were doing a glute exercise. Okay. We're going to go to set two. And just for reference, I tell you guys what weight I'm using. I think I did. I have a 30 here. Ready? And go. And again, this all depends on where you are in your fitness journey. So if you're just starting out, you can always do body weight. You can try holding just a five, a 10 pound dumbbell. Those five pound increments make a big difference. Two more. Okay. Breathe again. I will explain the next exercise. We are going to do um, wide squats. So our toes are pointed out to the sides as much as possible without you losing your balance. And what this is going to do when you have a wide stance like this with your toes pointed out, is it's gonna work your inner thighs. And what helps is to do this on your toes. So I'm gonna hold either one or two dumbbells here. If you have a heavy dumbbell, you can hold one. If you have lighter dumbbells, you can hold two. And I'll show you one of each for each set. But you're going to come down. You're gonna come up, up raise your heels up so you're on your toes come back down and up. So squat down, come up on your toes, down and up. 
up, okay? So since I think most of you would have lighter dumbbells, I'm going to hold two to show you how to hold two first. So you're just gonna hold them in between here, toes pointed out, and ready? You do have an angle to your back here, okay? Like you're working your glutes. And I'll show you from this angle instead. Ready? And down on your toes, heels down, one. Down on your toes, heels down, two. Down on your toes, heels down, three. Down, toes, heels down, four. Come down, off, off your heels, down, five. Down on your toes, down, six. Down, toes, down, seven. Down, toes, down, eight. Down, toes, down, nine. Down, toes, and 10. Okay, now if you want a bit of an extra challenge here, make sure those dumbbells are away from you so you don't trip. We're gonna pulse a little bit and do some frog jumps. So you're either gonna leave the floor and jump, and as a modification, if you can't jump, you're just gonna pulse here. Ready? And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you could see both variations there. You either jump or you can pulse like I did for the last five. We're gonna go to set two. I'm gonna hold one dumbbell so you can see the difference on how I grab these. Toes are out, wide stand so they're wider than hip width apart. And down, toes, one, down, toes, two, down, toes, three, and I'm holding a 30 pound here, four, and the first ones I was holding were 215s. Five, toes, six, toes, seven, toes, eight, toes, nine, toes, 10. Move those out of the way and either jump or pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. Making sure I don't go completely over our time here. We're gonna go to our fourth exercise, which is lateral lunges. Lateral lunges are great. They will work multiple muscles in your legs, mainly your glutes and inner and outer thighs and your glute meat which is the side of your butt here. So I want you to grab, um, you, if you have light dumbbells, you can grab two and you can put them on your shoulder. So you're just gonna come side to side. Or you can hold one heavier dumbbell here at your chest like I'm going to. The only thing I wanna note before we start is you really wanna push your butt back and get into this lunge as low as you can while you're pushing your butt a little bit back here. All my weight's in my heels, and that will make you activate your hamstrings and glutes here, which is what you're really trying to work. Okay, I'm gonna hold 20 at my chest, but again, you can hold two light dumbbells, and you can also do this with body weight. So really wide stance here to start out. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
nine, 10. Just a couple more here, because we are alternating sides. Last two, and down. We'll go fairly quickly to the next one, and I'll show you from a side view. Always remember, if you did the first set, and you're like, oh, it was pretty easy to finish, then I either want you to grab two dumbbells if you had one, or grab one heavier dumbbell. The amount of weight you hold really makes a difference in the amount of muscle you uh, gain, which leads to all the fat that you were trying to lose. All right, ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four more. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So, this is what I consider a light break. <laughs> We're gonna go to calf exercises, okay? So it should bring our heart rates down a little bit. Again, body weight's fine, but your calves are pretty strong. So if you can hold a couple dumbbells, I really want you to try. I'm gonna hold two 20s. Although, Sometimes I hold a lot more, but when you're doing um, faster paced exercises like we are today, uh, you do get fatigued faster, so it's okay if you need to go a little bit lighter. So we're gonna start with straight calf raises. We're gonna go five with your toes pointed straight, five with your toes pointed out, and five with your toes pointed in, okay? They hit different muscles in your calves, ready? And one, two, three, four, five, out. One, two, three, four, five, and in. One, two, three, four, five. We'll go quickly to the second set. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, out, one, two, three, four, five, in, one, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to keep those right there because we're going to go to sumo squats next. Sumo squats are a great staple exercise for your glutes. Really important then to remember that when we are squatting for sumo squats, you have this angle in your back. So here's your angle, okay? Weight's going to be in your heels and you're going to come down pretty low as much as you can. You'll notice that my back is flat, so I have no rounding here, and my shoulders are not making my back round. So shoulders are back, and there's no lump in my shoulders and upper back. So up and down here. We're gonna end with a few pulses at the end when we're done with 10 reps. You can either hold your dumbbells and do the pulses, you can drop your dumbbells and do the pulses. So if you're holding pretty heavy dumbbells, you can always drop them for the pulses at the end. Okay. So your feet are slightly wider than hip width apart. They're not as wide as those inner thigh wide ones we did, but they are a little bit wider. Toes are pointed slightly out to the corners, but not out to the sides like we did for the wide squats. Okay, angle in your back, 
shoulders are back, weight in your heels, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. We're gonna go to our second set. You see me working out with you with all the sweat. This is Leg day, if you don't combine it with upper body, is especially challenging. It'll get your heart rate up um, and you will feel it most likely the next day, which is completely normal. <clears throat> All right, set two. I'll show you from another angle here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, down and pulse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. One exercise that I think I'm going to add in that wasn't there is RDLs. And the reason I wanna add this in is because so many times it is done incorrectly. And I see this at the gym and I see these in videos on Instagram all the time. So what I want you to focus on here is you're hinging with your hips. You're not reaching down with your arms. You're not using your back. Your hamstrings are working to bring your body down to right here. If you're coming all the way down here, you're using your arms, you're using your back, and you're gonna put a lot of strain and pressure on your lower back. So if you are hinging here the right way and just making your hamstrings and glutes work like they're supposed to, it's gonna pretty much stop right here and not allow you to go down any further because you're gonna feel a really big pull here. So really concentrate on that hinge. I'm gonna have two 20s. Weight in your heels. The dumbbells glide along your legs so you don't want them out here. Again, it'll put a lot of pressure on your back. So keep them gliding down your legs. We're gonna come down slowly for a count of three. Up for a count of one. Down and two. You'll notice my shoulders are back. Three, four, five, six. Remember you're hinging with your hips. Seven, don't use your arms and back. Eight, nine, ten. If you feel this in your lower back, it is completely normal. So it shouldn't be painful, but there's a slight soreness type of feeling there because this also does work your lower back. You're working your posterior chain from your lower back all the way to your glutes and your hamstring for this exercise. So it is a really great exercise to learn how to do properly. Just don't reach all the way down for your toes. We're gonna go to set two. And slowly come down. You're hinging at your hips. Up for one. Slowly come down, gliding down your legs. Two. My fingers are literally gliding down my legs. Three, hinge, four. Remember the weight is in your heels. Five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, because I really want to keep this at 30 minutes, although I would love to do 10 more exercises, we are going to do one more exercise that focuses on our quads, and that is a variation of duck walks. So for this, you do have a slight angle again because, well, sorry, let me rephrase. <clears throat> you can have a slight angle if you're focusing on your glutes. Because we want this to be more of a quad exercise, you're going to try to keep your chest up and your back as upright as possible. So there are some exercises where it can be done for either or, like Bulgarian split squats. It just depends on the angle of your back. So here, for the purposes of doing our quads, I'm gonna hold one dumbbell at my chest. I'm gonna try to keep my back straight and chest upright. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come down as low as you can into your squat. If you can't do this and finish it all the way, if you're too low, you can always raise yourself up a little. So this is your modification. The modification is just coming up, which will release some pressure from your quads and your hamstrings and glutes, which will also be working. And you can finish the exercise up here instead of trying to stay down here the whole time. But do try to start off as low as you can. Okay, so we're gonna come down, follow me. We're going to step front, come back, step with the other foot, back, and pulse squat. Front, back, front, back, pulse the squat. Front, back, front, back, pulse that, front, back, front, back, pulse. This is the last two. Back, back, and pulse. That is a deceivingly difficult exercise. <laughs> because you are staying low into that squat the whole time, it really works several muscles in your legs. So for that one, because we had our chest upright, it's mainly gonna work your quads, but you will also feel it in your glutes and hamstrings. We're gonna do one more set. We will all be all done. And I will save my other glute and quad exercises for a different video. Okay, so we're going to start again. Set two. Come down as low as you can, and step, back, step, two, pulse. Step, back, step, pulse. Step, back, step, pulse. Step, back, step, pulse. Last one, step, Back, step, pulse. All right. You guys did it. I know it's a challenging workout. I hope that your heart rate was able, was a, you were able to keep it up. I'm watching my baby monitor at the same time. Um, we're gonna do a, a few stretches here. You're gonna hold your foot, pull back towards your butt so we can stretch out our quads. You will want to hold each stretch for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Most people will hold a stretch for five to 10 seconds and let go. That's not long enough for your muscles to come back to the right length. So you do wanna make sure that you hold it for long enough. Um, because um, if you, if, sorry, if you are a beginner, especially, um, you do want to stretch extra, even more than what we do after these videos. You want to go ahead and add another five, ten minutes of stretching. That's great. 
If you feel sore 24 to 48 hours after, it is completely normal, it will go away. Um, if you're new to strength training, um, it's a, you know, it's a workout um, that your muscles haven't felt before, so they are gonna feel sore. You don't have to feel sore to know that you got a good workout, but if you do feel sore, um, then it just means that you've challenged your muscles in a way that they haven't been challenged for a while. And we're gonna pull it in front of us and pull up for our hamstrings and glutes. I apologize for all my talking. Um, along with being a personal trainer, I'm also a corrective exercise specialist, so form is extremely important to me. Um, I really get concerned when I see people doing exercises with improper form because although you may not feel it right away, over time it can and typically does lead to injuries or imbalances within your different muscle groups in your body. So it's really important to understand how to do the exercise with the right form. Um, if you at any point feel like you're not doing it correctly, something doesn't feel right, something just um, hurts or is painful, you wanna stop doing the exercise. You don't wanna just complete it for the sake of completing it because it will cause more harm than good. Um, you can always drop me a line in the comments. I would absolutely love to answer any questions that you guys have, um, especially when it comes to form or any other modifications you would have liked to see. Um, I am going to post another workout for just upper body. And then hopefully that will be followed by a full body workout and some body weight workouts. And although you are able to do lower body exercises fairly easily um, without dumbbells, you will need at least light dumbbells in order to do the upper body exercises. So if you like this video, please do subscribe. I will continue to post workout videos as I find time with my three very lovely and energetic children. <laughs> And um, again, if you would like to see specific videos, I would love to make them. So do subscribe. Um, I also post nutritional tips. Um, so if you feel like you wanna know anything about nutrition and carbs and protein and all that good stuff, you can always drop me a comment and leave it there also. Thank you so much for joining me.